conflict resolution. From small conflict to big conflict. My conflict within, my conflict within, I should be able to deal, first of all, so that I can also deal with the conflict of two people and in the community. So one has to graduate to this process of conflict resolution. It doesn't come in one day. So young people are trained into, into, into slowly understanding the depth of nonviolence to the last level. Last level is called transformative nonviolence, which is which takes a lot of time before people understand. Transformative nonviolence is something which Gandhiji practiced, Mahatma Gandhi practiced, because he said, Look, I am fighting the British people because I want them to go, but I don't hate them. <laughs> right? I'm not hating them. My fight is not based on any hate. Right? I, I don't have to hate somebody when I when I fight. So this idea of transformative non-violence, like I want to be free from poverty, but I want you to be free from your habit of accumulation. See, I, I wish good for me, I also wish good for you. That is transformative, transforming both. I want freedom from poverty, but I also want you to be free, free from your habit of, your greed of accumulating. What a good feeling. I want to be free from oppression, but I also want you to be free from your habit of oppressing others. Right? It's, it's freedom for both. And that freedom is what is called, freedom for both is called transformative nonviolence. Right? Transform both without hating. So nonviolence has great, great potential to move from very small action to very large transformative action. So young people are trained in that. And through this training process, now, they organized not only a march of 50,000 people, but also now, like Jill was telling you, they, they are wanting to walk from Delhi to Geneva. Right? So after doing your work at the community level, after taking up issues at your national level, now you feel responsible that you also have a responsibility to the planet as a whole. It is not just dealing with India and Indian problems, but I also want to work in order to solve the problems at the, at the global level. And that is where an organization like Ekta Europe comes in, right? You can't, we can't do it. We are Indians. We can do our, uh, do away with our problems in India, but then how do we deal with issues globally unless we have partners all over the world? That is why all our struggles are built on four pillars. We call it a social movement built on four pillars. The first pillar is called the power of the poor, right? Poor people, at the bottom, if they don't stand up, they don't, they don't want to change, nothing can change. And poor is redefined in a way that we are economically poor, but socially, culturally, spiritually rich. Right? The poverty is not all kinds of poverty. Economically poor doesn't mean totally poor. They are socially, culturally, spiritually very rich, but economically poor. Many people who are economically rich may be socially, culturally, spiritually poor, right? So poverty is not just for one group of people. Poverty is a larger issue. <coughs> so when we fight poverty, we need to fight poverty at every level. Even among rich people, there can be poverty. Poor people, economically poor people, that is one pillar that they need to stand up and say, we want to change our The second pillar is called power of the young. Because we believe that uh, like wind energy, solar energy, youth energy, right? It is an energy available in the society and we need to invest in that. We need to invest time, energy, resources to motivate and, and take this energy up. And the third thing is called the power of solidarity. So this is what we are expressing here today. When, when people from seven, eight countries come together, and sit and discuss how can we organize such a large action from Delhi to Geneva. That is where we are trying to build solidarity. Because solidarity is very important. In a globalizing world, globalization of solidarity is also very, very important. And the fourth pillar is called the pillar of non-violence, the power of non-violence. So much of our actions are built on the power of the poor, power of the young, power of solidarity, and power of non-violence. 
So that is how Ekta Parishad was functioning uh, in India. And now we are slowly trying to see whether some of these philosophies can be applicable globally. And so we do organize some training programs in non-violence in some part of the world. Sometime in Geneva, sometime in Nicaragua, sometime in Colombia. So slowly I find there is a huge take on it. There was a time, 20 years back, when we spoke about non-violence, people said, that's not such an important issue. But today, as I travel across the globe, I think a non-violence focus, this has huge take. People find it very interesting. The energy of young people, energy of non-violence put together. If we can transform the world, there's a great possibility. That is what many feel. So I hope this coming together of us, BLLF and ECTA Europe, will lead us to greater possibilities in the coming years. Let us work together to make the world a better place for the coming generations. Thank you very much.